other areas of the jungle, the giant Aua tree raises its head above the neighboring growth. It grows and extends its territory by dropping aerial roots from above. The Aua might well be a metaphor for the Samoan family, which is usually a large extended family with many roots. Most villages are home to two or three hundred people who may actually belong to no more than a few families. In such a small community, there is little room for disharmony. Individuality and private ownership are scorned. Sharing is the principle here. Work, duties, possessions, even children are shared. The Samoan system, with its matais or chiefs handling the distribution of goods, has served the people well and continues to do so even in the modern world. This lack of the notion of private ownership leads to a community with little personal privacy. These open-walled, oblong structures are typical of Samoan homes and community buildings and are perfectly suited to the climate of the tropics. Houses or falles are often built on the stone bases of ancestors' homes. Shades made of plated palm frond are let down only when the wind or rain blow too hard. Larger and more open, the community folly is the center of every village. Both men and women have their own follies. Here, decisions about the community are made, and social activities find a place as well. Like a family car, the outrigger canoe is indispensable. Fishing is still the primary source of protein, and small local fish drives are an everyday occurrence though whole villages carry out huge fish drives as well. These fish weirs are set out annually by the villagers, and each year, without fail, huge schools of fish are brought in from this small cove. The catch is always divided among the village families by the chief. It is difficult not to romanticize life in Samoa. The people are industrious, without being materialistic. They make the most of what they have and share what they produce. The irresistible products offered by the more developed countries